Kazakhstan Space Communication Center is set to access the international market. The center will provide its services to countries such as Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, which don't have their own space satellites. Specialists have estimated that the export potential will total about 65 million tinge. Meanwhile, the capacities of the Kassat-2 and the Kassat-3 satellites are leased by more than 20 Kazakh organizations. Last year, the enterprise generated more than 5 billion tinge of revenue due to the spacecraft's operation and the amount is expected to increase this year. The center also covers the full demand of the Kazakh communication providers, which contributes 47 billion tinge to the country's economy due to the import substitution and broadcasts about 300 satellite television and radio channels. We need to continue strengthening the development of the center as it brings new technologies, new satellites, new solutions aimed at reduction of costs, global constellations and low orbit satellites. Kazakhstan will definitely participate in all the latest developments. We are currently negotiating the opportunity to provide our communication services with Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and other neighboring countries. Our team came back from Uzbekistan and we will work on it. Our spacecraft covered the entire territory of Kazakhstan as well as neighboring Central Asian countries. A service provider in one of the countries can install an antenna even in the mountains, connect to our satellite and establish a connection. For example, our services are more often used in Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyz providers adjust their antennas with the help of our providers and work with our spacecraft through the Kazakh providers. <laughs> Implementation of educational reforms and strengthening of the three-language policy are among the top ten priorities of the Nurotan Party until 2030. President Nazarbayev's proposal of advanced training of teachers was supported by educators in Kizilorda. Author of a number of teaching guides, Mavis Kwok is teaching English language to students and teachers in Kizilorda at the special invitation of the Nazarbayev Intellectual School. The Canadian specialists emphasize the need to apply advanced methods and additional intellectual potential to train a competitive generation. Well, from my experience, uh, it takes at least like one generation. So it's not just that, that one generation need to adopt a new language, but at the same time, they need to be trained as a language teacher who has the language skills and international exposure in order to teach the next generation well. Eleonora Sagatkeze is teaching biology in English to senior students. The teacher completed Ustas Line, a six-month training program, and received the B1, B2 and C1 certificates. The teacher believes that continuous training is important to meet the new requirements. Initially, it was difficult. I have not been learning English for a while. Therefore, I face some challenges. We need to learn every day. As a mentor said, we need to read books, watch films and train the listening skills. Then we will see the results. Mastering international languages will allow Kazakhstan to present its achievements to the world and strengthen international economic cooperation. Therefore, the three-language policy is an important requirement. Women's entrepreneurship in Kazakhstan is one of the most developed among the Central Asian countries. According to EBRD Director for Kazakhstan, Agris Primanis, the support for businesswomen in the region is one of the key areas of the joint program by the Kazakh Ministry of National Economy and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. In 2018, the EBRD allocated 540 million US dollars to Kazakhstan and the value is expected to increase this year. The priority sectors of cooperation include green energy, transport and infrastructure. 
I believe that the women's entrepreneurship program developed in Kazakhstan is the most advanced among other Central Asian countries. We held a number of events and meetings in the regions of Kazakhstan where we bring together women entrepreneurs with various famous entrepreneurs who share their experiences. Astana-based fashion designer Kamilia Suleymenova has taken felting up a notch by not only creating warm boots made of felt, but also summer clothing and slippers made from the same wool material. She has been designing and creating clothing items made of felt for three years. Her collection includes unique styles of coats, hats, dresses and sweaters. All of the clothes are comfortable and trendy. Мы в своем войлоке, в своей одежде хотим показать многогранность этого материала, то есть насколько... Through our collection, we want to show the versatility of the felt, of how soft, comfortable and practical the material can be. Felt is good for everyday wear. We want to start creating men's wear and children collections since felt has medicinal properties and it is absolutely eco-friendly. Он абсолютно экологичен. The fashion designer disagreed with the common stereotype that felt is itchy. Camilia said that it all depends on the quality of the material. In her case, she orders her materials from Italy and it is hypoallergenic, soft and fluffy. Camilia hired three tailors to sew the clothes. Her entire collection is handmade. One of the tailors, Genis Gul Nurpesova, has only one month experience, but she has improved her skills at making hats. The most difficult part is to subtly decompose the felt. The thinner it is, the higher the quality. For this purpose, I need to tear the thin strands off so that they will be thinner. Felting is not only work, but also a meditation for many fashion designers and tailors. The creative process allows them to relax and use their creative imagination. Kazakh-made felt clothes are high in demand in Italy and England. Kazakh jewellery art is a significant part of the Kazakh culture and serves as a way to preserve the authentic style of the Kazakh people. There are stories and legends behind every item, jewellery pieces used to perform both decorative and magical functions. Earlier, Kazakh people believed that girls had to wear earrings and hair jewellery as protective charms. Hair was considered as sacred by the ancient Kazakhs only if they were protected with silver items. Rings have special purposes in Kazakh traditions. For example, a bride's mother used to present a massive ring to her co-mother-in-law, hoping for her favourable attitude towards the daughter-in-law. We can see that two Kazakh tribes are uniting. They are also symbols to protect the young family. We can also see Shanirak, which is a Yurtsis crown in the centre. There is a carnelian gem representing the earth and turquoise representing heaven Tengri. Kazakhs believed that the earth mother Umay and the heavenly father Tengri would protect the young couple with the help of the gems. The Kazakh people believe that gemstones have both decorative and protective properties. Just like many years ago, Kazakh jewellers are preserving the ancient traditions in jewellery making. The unique jewellery pieces made by Kazakh jewellers are valued in both Kazakhstan and abroad. Two Moscow residents, Yelizaveta Osipova and Anastasia Rishetnikova, started a project titled Moscow Kazakhsha to provide information about Moscow for Kazakh speaking audiences. The video channel is based on a popular online video sharing website. We recorded a short video of six of us singing Kazakh songs and we posted the video on social media. The video was quite popular among users, therefore we decided to continue. 
The young woman became interested in the Kazakh language while studying in Moscow Linguistic University, where they discovered poems of philosophical works by famous Kazakh poets Mukhagali Makatayev and Abai Kunanbayuli. There are many traditions in Kazakhstan, including ceremonies related to relationships between men and women and between family members. Rituals such as Tusao Kiesu, which is celebrating children's first steps, Betashar, which is unveiling of a bride's face, and Shashu, or tossing candies and coins to celebrate important events. The students learned the basic Kazakh language in the first year and currently teach the language to their friends. I like the Kazakh language because it does not sound like other languages. I used to study European languages, which have a different structure. However, the Kazakh language is very interesting. We listen to songs by Kazakh boy Ben 91, Kazakh singer Dimash Kudaibergen, and Italian singer Son Pascal, who learned the Kazakh language. The Russian bloggers are planning to make videos on Kazakhstan's historical sites. Anastasia wants to organize exhibitions by Kazakh artists in Russia, while Yelizaveta is planning to pursue her diplomatic career in the future, hoping that her career will be connected with Kazakhstan. A musician in Aktobe invented a new Dombra teaching method. The system is useful for amateur musicians. Gulsana Mahzim Betova realized that it is challenging to teach kindergarten children how to play the Dombra. She understood that explaining music scores and digital system to the children is not a solution. The musician decided to introduce geometric figures and various colors in her teachings. <laughs> The system is based on replacing notes with colors. These colors can be applied to all musical instruments because we use notes to play all instruments. I converted the notes to seven colors. This method can be applied on plug string instruments as well as the piano and violin. The musician marks fingers with five figures and paints notes in different colors. The method is easy and don't require learning more symbols. Gulsana Mahzim Betovas's teaching method is also useful for people with disabilities. The musician has been giving free classes for children with special needs for half a year. Her long-term students can easily play five different quiz. My children was never engaged in any activities at home, but now my child is humming songs. My child was also never involved in any handicraft, and now my child is engaged in knitting. I know some the Dombra teacher registered her unique method at the Ministry of Justice and received her copyright. Gulsana Makzim Betova is planning to open similar centers in other regions in Kazakhstan in the future. World Team Chess Championship is being held in Kazakhstan for the first time. The best chess players from 14 countries competed in Astana. The participants represent countries such as China, Azerbaijan, Iran, the USA, Egypt, Russia, Sweden, the UK, Ukraine, Hungary and Armenia. There is also a team representing India which is the birthplace of chess. There are many world and regional champions among the teams. There is no particular cash prize, but there are cups and medals for the teams and individual players who represent their countries at the event. For example, a runner-up of the 2016 World Championship, Sergei Karyakin, who is one of the world's best chess players, is leading the Russian team. The majority of teams presented their best players. Kazakhstan team includes Rina Jumabayev, Murtaz Kajgaleyev, Anwar Ismagambetov, Denis Makhnev and Pyotr Kostienko. The national women's team includes Dinara Sadwa Kasova, Bibisara Asaubaeva, Gulis Khan Nakhbaeva, Gulmira Dauletova and Jamsaya Abdumalik. Start of the 
Kazakhstan women's team is ranked six at the start of the competition. I believe that advancing to the top five will be a good result. We will do our best to achieve a higher position. It is important for the team to focus at the tournament. As a team leader, I will do my best to maintain the good spirit in the team. The first World Chess Championship was held in 1886. Chess is currently played by 650 million people in the world, including 200,000 Kazakhstan players. The 112th Years of Glamour pin-up and fashion retro exhibition was opened in Astana. The unique exhibition includes engravings, collages, pages of famous American publications, calendars, posters and works of popular illustrators of the 20th century. These exhibits were brought from several private collections in the USA. They were then transferred to the Metropolitan Gallery from the fund of the St. Petersburg Art Bank. These are art objects. In fact, these are items that collectors look for because the most ancient exhibit of today's project dates back to 1907. There weren't magazines, but instead, there were albums on art books and guidelines. If someone wanted to be fashionable and beautiful, he or she should follow the instructions that were described in these fashion books. We can trace all the stages that Pinup has gone through. Some of the exhibits are modern collectible posters, which were issued in the past three decades. Experts say that the concept of the exhibition is based on historical aspect. The main idea of the event is to display the chronicle of vintage fashion. In total, the exhibition features over 90 works of 26 artists. Гламур уже 112 лет назад уже был гламур. И когда мода интегрирована в искусство, the glamour style has been created for 112 years now. When fashion is integrated into and combined with art, it gives such double effect to drawings or sketches. After seeing this exhibition today, I believe people will be enlightened with another story, which is Pina. There were very few such art exhibitions and events in Kazakhstan, but now Asana is developing fast in terms of art or fashion. Uh, uh, the exhibition is open to residents and visitors of the capital until March 16. Music masterpieces were performed in Astana Opera. The music pieces were performed by the opera's soloist Maria Mudriak, an honored worker of Kazakhstan, Nyedet Chotabayev, accompanied by the symphony orchestra. The orchestra was conducted by well-known Belgian conductor Ilya Mashkevich, who was invited to Astana Opera for the first time. The famous conductor was applauded in Russia, Japan, France, Germany and other countries. Under the direction of Ilya Mashkevich, the orchestra performed the Symphony No. 9 of the great Czech composer Antonin Dvorak. The Belgian conductor claimed that he had performed the symphony quite often. The symphony is primarily distinguished by unrestrained energy and abundance of beautiful melodies. I want to bring to life what the composer had in his mind while writing the symphony. Not just to play the notes and scores, but to discover something new in the music work. Of course, you can't go away from the traditions, but you can always bring something of your own. Kazakh opera star Maria Mudryak will turn 25 years old next month. Despite the busy schedule, the worldwide famous singer is always eager to meet with the Kazakh public. Maria will present Puccini's opera La Boheme at Astana Opera on April 19. She will also perform at the Bolshoi Theatre in Russia and Beirut. I decided to present the past, the present and the future. 
The opera Don Pasquale is my past. The force is my present in which I make my debut in Australia this year. And my future is Il Trovatore, where I play Leonora. I love all the characters because I think if artists don't like the character, they will not be able to perform the opera well.